Hey guys, welcome back. This is Rez with video number two. So let's start creating our new project, our new Android Studio project. So you guys see where I'm clicking? Just click there and you'll get this new interface or new page. Uh, there's a few things we need to fill out and we move on. Quickly, we're going to give an application name. I won't explain anything too obvious. So let's say my... Sorry. Okay, there we go. My first ever Android project. I made it super long, but that's life. Okay, then we come to company domain. So the company domain is really important because this is the part where it makes your application super unique. Why do we need it unique? Well, think of it this way, actually. Let's say I'm called Chrome, right? You guys all use Chrome as your browser inside Android. And there's another application named Chrome, okay? And in all fairness, I actually like this because sometimes we're going to have a lot of similar names because there's way too many applications and too many stuff kind of overlaps or people don't know how to name their stuff and it's not really obvious, but your thing is obvious and, you know, so for so on. So for some odd reason, Chrome, the browser, it's a browser and it's called Chrome. And Chrome in my application, let's say it's just the color Chrome or the silver-ish metal Chrome, right? In both cases, it's actually, you know, legit, right? One is already named and one is this. So this is where the company domain comes in. Well, there it's made by Google.com. So in their case, their Chrome would be something like this, Google.com something. So inside the computer of Android, when it looks at the package name, it could differentiate that Chrome and with my Chrome if they're installed on the same one. All right. So the application name, I would say, make it something you like that makes sense with your application or something that's a brand name. So if your thing is called Android, you might as well call it Android, right? If your thing is the family guy, you would put family guy in there or whatever it is, right? For the company name, this is where you guys would put a unique website, or in this case, well, just put your name if you do not have a website. It doesn't really matter in that case, okay? For my students, however, you guys will need to put your student ID number, and let's just put the .com, okay? So, there's an actual tree structure why it's doing the reverse, and it's all to do with networking. And as we're not doing networking now, I will not talk about it. But eventually I'll make a video about why this is going backwards and how this makes sense for the domain and the DNS and all that crap. Okay? So for now, over here, I'm just going to call it res.com. Okay? So every project I create from now on is going to go in this package and it's going to go like this. Um, you do not need to put C++ support. This is for way more advanced users. So let's keep it out so we have less things to worry about. Now, project location, this is going to matter. This is where all your files are going to be. Remember the folder thing I told you? Look here. It's called Chrome in this case because our application name is Chrome. I'm going to rename this to my first Android app. All right? So if I need to come back, I need to grab all this folder to send it to my friend or to send it to my teacher. Let's click Next. Now, this is where you kind of tell a hey, Android what devices I'm going to go for so you could kind of build you the starting files for it or the setup you require. Again, we're not going to go too much into it. For now, we're going to skip where TV, Android, Auto, and Glass for now. Okay? You might want to eventually go back into those because they're kind of still, I would say, new, especially Glass and Android Auto. So you got a lot of liberty on what you make and you probably could make a great app which would make you a lot of money. Now, Having the phone and tablet selected, right? We're going to figure out which minimum SDK we need. The easiest thing whenever you're picking this, I would say, is click on Help Me Choose. Right? You're going to get this screen. This is really cool screen, and I love that they added this. So there's a bunch of stuff you're seeing here. We're going to go step by step on it. First thing is on the left, you have the Android versions, all right? And the name that goes with those versions, and so forth. On. Okay, just remember those versions. So the better the version, the more features you have, right? So the 
highest is the newest 6.0 is the newest one we have currently it's on like pixel phone and etc on the middle part you have the cumulative distribution now what this means it means if you select this version how many of the people using Android gonna be able to access your software so I'll give you an example if I pick 4.0 out of 9 well out of all the people that are using Android 97.4 percent out of everyone with an Android device or at least that logged into the you know the Android market thingy I forgot the name for it anyway 97.4 percent of those you're gonna have access to so they're gonna be able to download and use your application why because they have really old and shitty phone or crappy phone or whatever you want to call it. that's missing a lot of features well, now it's also gonna make your life a bit harder because there's a lot of features that you might rely on and you don't have it, all right if I go with the latest one 6.0 you're gonna see it only says 4.7 percent this is obviously gonna go higher as we go further on in life because newer phone comes out the old ones kinda of get thrown out you know but currently I only get 4.7 people 4. 7% of the people owning Android. So in this case, it was probably at this point, it's only the people that have bought off the brand new Pixels and it's like been a year now. And that's the only people I have. And later on, these guys are probably going to upgrade eventually to going to Marshmallow and so forth so on, okay? Now, the third important thing is this thing on the right. This whole category which explains every platform that comes out or every version that comes out. It basically says, hey, what the fuck did you just add to my Android? Sorry for my, uh, yeah, sorry for my, uh, uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic, sorry for my bad terms, okay? So this part says basically, hey, what are you adding into this version? What kind of new feature do we have, right? So if we press 6.0, we get the security part, the system. This is what they're adding. Multimedia, you know, they're adding full 4K display mode support for MIDI and etc etc user input what kind of user input do we get well we get voice interaction SS API Bluetooth styles etc so my recommendation is figure out before you start any Android project right figure out what your project is figure out what kind of things you require right sometimes you need to be able to talk to your phone sometimes you need to be able to use the Bluetooth sometimes you need to be able to use NFC if you go through all of these <clears throat> you'll notice that let's say let's say here on 5.0 this is when they started getting OpenGL inside right so this allowed better games and so forth so on okay so if I'm making a game I, if I, it's going to be a really intensive game, I'm going to make sure that the minimum support, the minimum device I'm going to support is only 5.0. Because there's no point in supporting anything lower than that because you're going to be suffering trying to make it work with something that it shouldn't. Right? Because anytime that there's something missing in a version that you're supporting, it means you have to bring a way to go around it. Right? A alternative way of solving that issue, which is not given to you. Right? Maybe in the future this would be great for you, but I would say stick with the stuff you need. Okay, So I would start from the top and I would just keep going down until I find the specific minimum I need. If at some, no at some point I notice, let's say on KitKat, I notice here we're getting NFC finally. right? And that's the minimum I need. I need to have at least NFC. I'm not going to go to Jelly Beans anymore. Okay, because Jelly Beans doesn't have NFC. I know KitKat has NFC, and from now on, everything else under it would have NFC. So Lollipop, Lollipop, Marshmallow. Okay, and the coolest thing is, if you select 4.4, the KitKat, the guys that are in Lollipop could use it. The guys that are in Marshmallow could still use it, right? Because it's always backward compatible, but it's not forward compatible. So if I make it in Marshmallow, <clears throat> these guys from this version cannot use my software okay so what are we gonna do for now I'm just gonna stick to marshmallow just for a couple tries and we'll switch it up if we need something but as you guys are learning oh actually you know what 
I would suggest grab your phone, figure out what version you're using, and go with that one. We're going to come back why you should stick to the version of your phone, especially when you're learning, because it's going to make your life easier. We'll get back to it. So for now, I'm going to select 6.0 because I have the pixel. Press OK. Press Next. Now we get to this page, and it says, Add an activity to your mobile. So inside Android, I'm not going to talk too deeply about it, but activities are basically your windows. Okay, so every window that comes up, you know, every display that comes up, this is called an activity. Okay, currently, I don't want you guys to select no activity. We're going to select empty. And if you ever want to, later on, I would say go and select different ones, see how they are, how they work, because they do a lot of cool things, right? So you get the navigation drawer on the left, that's really neat, etc., etc. So press next. What do you want to call your activity? Again, this is the main place where everything starts, so I'm going to keep it as main activity. You'll notice there's two things. There's an activity name and a layout name. The activity uh, name, or the main activity in my case because I named it that, that's going to be where all my Java code is going to be. Okay, so this is how hey how it works, while the layout name is going to be how it looks. Okay, so the look would be in the layout, the activity name would be the how it works. Okay, and these two things are connected to each other. So when when the thing starts, it will start the layout showing the display at the same time start the back, which is all the code in the background. Right, we'll get back to that later on. Um, so generate layout file, that's basically allowing you to, that, to do that. Backward compatibility, app compat. By the way, if you click this, it would kind of tell you why you should have this or why you shouldn't have this. For now, it doesn't hurt to have it on, okay? But it's an extra hassle at some points. But I, I, really, I really think you guys will never hit it. So it's fine for you guys if you leave it on. You could also leave it off. It shouldn't matter, okay? However, you'll see at some points, if you do leave it off, and I left it on or I have a project on, it's going to say it's inheriting from App Compact rather than the other one, okay? Um, you know what? For now, as we're starting out, let's just leave it unchecked. We'll check it back again for the next project, okay? When you have all of this set up, press Finish. So, as you guys are waiting, you see that Gradle is figuring stuff out and building my things required to start my project, okay? So, Gradle does a bunch of stuff. We'll get back to it. It's a whole whole thing in its own, all right? But you guys should notice something. As you're waiting, you're going to see some errors sometimes popping up saying, hey, this doesn't exist or, hey, this is getting an error, like this case where R is not, you can't resolve it, all right? You guys got to wait here. If you start trying to fix it or you let it auto fix or you start, you know, clicking on buttons to, you know, figure out what's the problem and fixing it, you might actually cause more errors. You really need to wait for the Gradle to build, okay, and to finish building. Because there's still an Intel sense in the background saying, hey, how's it connected? Hey, how's everything working? And so forth. So on. Okay? So. When everything should be done, at the bottom you should see this thing saying Gradle build finished in 14 whatever seconds or whatever it says. If there's an error, you'll see it here, okay? For now, we don't need to care about it too much, okay? So we're just going to bring it back down. All right, so we have our project going. Everything's perfect. Let's check a couple things, and then we're going to move on. First way, the first thing, you'll notice on the left, we have our project. You could disable the enabled. There's two parts you need to check. Remember the part we talked about, the, the layout, the activity we created? Well, this is the background code, the main activity. You could see the code here. All it's saying is, hey, go create me the layout I just set. Right? And if we go inside our resources, inside the layout, inside the resource, the layout, activity main, this is our activity main and design of it. Okay? You could zoom in with the mouse wheel or the scrolls, and you could see how it works. 
currently it just has our project name and hello world all right if you can't see well just make sure to close some stuff or I would suggest don't close it if you really don't understand how to bring it back up for now but this is pretty much it. so if I want to modify my activity layout or how it looks like currently I go in anywhere in my widgets you scroll down and grab something drag it put it in there all right eventually I want you guys to get good enough that we're gonna just do it with the XML well a bit here and a bit there because the XML gives you more power it's gonna be better and so forth so we're gonna leave that for now just remember that your code is inside the Java the <clears throat> the location right com dot reza dot my first android app and the resource is going to be in resource layout activity main okay now for these two files that I created for you just leave it be it's two test folders okay or test files whatever you want to call it it's to make automatic test to test our program to make sure everything works and so forth okay leaving all of this there for now let's get it going okay there's a lot of tools and we're not gonna go through everything but let's get it go on the top if you notice you'll see a play button this is important because it works like your VCR when you press play it will start your application now you'll see a bunch of stuff okay here you'll see your virtual devices if you don't if you want we'll eventually do a video on creating a new virtual device for now just look and you also have your connected device you connect them by connecting a USB to your phone All right. so currently I have Google Pixel and it's running 7.1.1 .1 API 25 All right now if you want a different device you could create it we'll go through that but I would really suggest you guys use your phone because it's really slow and it will make your computer a bit slower because it really tries to create the same environment that he has right anyway <clears throat> so pressing play you'll notice at the bottom again there's some stuff going on hey what are you doing well look Gradle is building your application okay so if you click on this little bar it should even tell you what's going on at this moment so I'm launching your app I'm indexing everything on your phone and so forth so on and when your app is finished it should launch on your phone okay I'll see if I could take a screenshot of my phone and send it to you guys but on, otherwise you should see it on your phone okay cheers <laughs>